Hey guys, Andy here from Mediocre Hobbies, bringing you another 3D printing video. Uh, this one is a little bit different. I don't know I say that in a lot of videos, I start with a little bit different. That's kind of like showing you guys different things, things you may not have thought about before. Um, like I said, 3D printing is a big part of what I do, uh, and it's a big part of my hobby these days. So to give you a little bit of a reference, I am, like I said, a fan of 3D printing. There's my two quite large FDM printers here. Uh, the Two Trees SP1 is here, and the Artillery Sidewinder, which is probably the most gnarly name for a FDM 3D printer I've ever seen, uh, is here. Two very large, beastly FDM printers. Uh, if you go down to the end of the studio, as you can see, there's quite a substantial quantity of 3D printers. Um, I love playing around with different 3D printers. Uh, I love when companies want to collaborate with me and let me test them out. Uh, it's a lot of fun and I love sharing that with you guys. Uh, I've got an Anycubic Photon over there and then uh, an Anycubic, I um, uh, can't even remember the name of that one now, the first FDM one that came out. Um, so I've been doing 3D printing now for about six years. So I've been doing it for quite a while yeah, and I definitely have fun with it and technology has definitely uh, improved and increased um, as time has gone on. But one of the things that I felt hasn't really increased as time has gone on is kind of 3D printing safety, if that makes sense to, to you. Uh, 3D printing is always something that is a little bit more on the, the advanced side when it comes to a hobby. Um, like uh, older people should definitely do it. Like I don't think anyone under the age of 16 should really be messing around with 3D printers. Um, either you're messing with FDM ones and you're dealing with some serious temp, 200 degree uh, nozzles and hot ends, liquid plastic. Uh, it's not, it's, you know, and as machines go, they tend to break down, they need a lot of work, a lot of maintenance, and it's, it can be a bit of an involved one. And then, of course, when you move over to the resin printers, you're dealing with quite a harsh uh, chemical. You don't want to be inhaling that. You don't want to be touching that. You don't want to be messing with that. So that brings a whole other side to kind of dangerous, which is a sad thing because I realized quite recently when my two adorable little nieces asked me, um, do I do 3D printing? Uh, and I said, yeah, of course, I've got loads of 3D printers. I love 3D printing. And they, they, their eyes lit up. They thought it was the coolest thing in the world that Uncle Andy was doing 3D printing. They've obviously seen it on YouTube and stuff like that, but they were far too small um, to even consider showing them how it all works or what happens. And that is until a specific company reached out to me and offered me this. So this is a Kokomi printer. It was um, targeted to me uh, sold to me um, in the concept that it was supposed to be designed for things like schools and libraries. So it's a 3D printer that's kind of designed for uh, use with kind of younger kids and younger people or people who are just getting into 3D printing. As you can see, it is tiny. There's my hand for scale. Um, when I showed this to the, the boss of the channel, Miss Laura, she described it as like an easy bake oven for 3D printing, which I think is a very apt description of what this thing is. Um, and literally one of the first things that shot into my mind was maybe I can use this to show my nieces 3D printing, uh, which I think is gonna be a really cool thing. And I've actually decided that now that this video is over and I no longer need this 3D printer, like I said, I've got bigger ones over there that are perfect for me. I'm gonna actually be giving this to my, my nieces to have some fun with and, and to play around. But they, uh, they don't know this yet as of me recording this. They have absolutely no idea that I shall be doing this. I have um, confirmed that it is okay with their mother, my sister, she's terrifying, uh, before I did it. But yeah, so here is uh, the printer. As you can see, it is absolutely tiny. It would fit really kind of snug and neat and tidy into pretty much any surrounding. An interesting feature that I found with this 3D printer is the idea of the filament. So this is the filament that uh, sits on the back of the machine. Yeah, and basically replacements come in boxes like this. So you can literally crack out the box, click this thing on the back, plug it in, and then it all automatically winds through and does all of that for you. As opposed to standard FDM printing where you get a spool and you have to attach it to a printer and then feed it up over into some mechanical bits and feed it in yourself. Which of course, if you're experienced with 3D printing, it's not a problem. But if you're new to 3D printing or if you're somebody who doesn't do it very often, a system like this is really cool. The uh, printing uh, material comes in a bunch of different colors, I believe. They sent me out an orange, a black, and a white was already preloaded into it, which is pretty cool. So white is the one I decided to do my test prints on. I originally started with this, which was a two-stage print. I printed off the awesome Halloween head first. 
as you can see it printed out very well. I did get one tiny little slippage here which created a line which is a bit of annoyance. That's fine and then a little wizardy or witch hat goes on top of it. Makes a beautiful little Halloween decoration. Absolutely love it. And then I decided to go for a slightly more complicated print which this one which took many many hours to print out but it is a awesome sci-fi kind of space gnome man which I absolutely love this piece. I'm glad I got to print it off before I'll be donating this printer across to my nieces. So I'm definitely gonna keep this guy and he's ace. And uh, the quality is phenomenal. I don't know if you can even see the, how thin the lines are. So as goes for print quality, it is very, very good. Of course, it is a very tiny print bed surface. It's like a 100 millimeter by 100 millimeter printing surface, which is tiny. But like I said, for somebody getting into 3D printing, for people who may be excited by the prospect of being able to do 3D printing for the first time, or for, for parents or people who have, like I said, nieces or nephews that you want to introduce to this awesome hobby at a, a slightly younger age than I would recommend for these kind of machines, I think this is the kind of thing that is perfect. Now, it is not all rainbows and sunshine. Um, the the filament, the changing the filament, those cartridges are a bit of a bizarre thing because unlike every other 3D printer, you can pretty much buy spools of any different material you want, load it up and feed it in. Whereas this one, you are locked into buying the Kokoni cartridges and attaching those onto the back and then filling them through. Uh, they are about 20 bucks for a replacement, which will get you, um, I don't know, let's, let's have a quick look actually. So I've printed off these two pieces and I have it connected. You control this thing by the app. So there's 41% filament remaining in the machine currently. So that means I have used just under 60% of the filament to create these two things. You probably get one more print out of it and that would be 20 euro. So it can be a little bit expensive um, to run this thing um, kind of on the regular. Um, but like I said, as an introductory machine, I think it definitely hits the nail on the head. And uh, that is another interesting fact is that you run this thing from uh, your smartphone phone so you just generally connect to an app once it is connected which as you can check that it was it is now sitting at idle it is ready to go if you want to replace it with filament you do it from here but then you literally just go through a whole host of preset things which i think is really cool so you've got some popular designs you can explore more designs you can go for toy models scroll through find one that you like the look of i don't know a little frog a little miniature join man and then all i literally do is hit print here and then this thing will start printing it so i think as goes usability as well every other print that i have here you have to go into your computer um you have to go into a slicing software you have to pull files across add supports if you're not you know auto support does most of the work these days and then transfer it to usb key dongle whatever bring it to a compute thing plug it in access it and then print from there which can be a little bit more involved not terribly difficult but a little bit more involved Whereas opposed to this thing where you can just hit print from your smartphone and then a couple hours later you'll have an awesome miniature. So yes, Kokoni machine. It gets a thumbs up for me for, I believe it's intended target. Do I think every um, person who's already involved in 3D printing should run out and buy one of these things? Not at all. I don't think it is made for us. Like I said, it's not something that I will be keeping in my collection of 3D printers. I will definitely be handing it off to my nieces who will get some love and enjoyment for it. Whereas if I got sat in my collection, it would be an ornament on a shelf for many years to come. Um, I will leave all the links below to this awesome machine and you can check it out for yourself and let me know what you think about it in the comments, whether you can see a use for it in our 3D printing market. And like I said, I think the best use for it is for the introductory machine for people to use. And um, yeah, I'd literally love to know what you guys think about this because it definitely breaks the mold for 3D printing as it stands now. Uh, you can kind of like most printers do exactly the same thing this thing and this thing although they're quite different in shape and design they do exactly the same thing it's a fairly similar print size and uh, one prints from the top one prints from the bottom it's pretty much it the resin printers all pretty much exactly the same except for some resolution and some build plate size other than that they're all exactly the same machine whereas this thing just definitely feels like um something a little bit different so let me know what you guys think in the comments below. And uh, like I said, if you are interested in checking this out, check out the comments below or check out all the links below. And uh, yeah, hope you guys found this helpful. Hope you found this informative. Uh, if you did, give the video a like. 
If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe not to miss out. I generally do at least one 3D printing video a week. It's usually my Thursday video. Uh, so if you don't want to miss out on those, subscribe. Thank you guys so much for sticking around to the end of the video. I'll see you in the next one.